Good morning, Tom, Chris, and Sabrina. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Sabrina. So, are we filing an appeal? Have this, has this appeal been filed yet? Hadn't been filed yet. It will be. Today? I don't know if it's going to be today, but it's going to be soon. Is it going to be before the GFT files their lawsuit? The GFT lawsuit. Well, it's hard to say. I've been hearing about that lawsuit for quite some time. It has been a minute. Um, Tom, you know, we haven't got to talk to you to unpack uh, the uh, decision that uh, Judge Sicola made, uh, although I know you briefly did uh, characterize it as punting it off to the Supreme uh, Court. So I guess we'll just start there. Tom, uh, what was your reaction to the uh, to Judge Sicola's uh, order? Well, I think it was, well, I was uh, surprised. Uh, you know, ever since this process began, we've been speaking about the fact that the law holds that in a emergency you know gov guam employees go home and uh, that entire section of the law was completely ignored uh, by the superior court so uh, that's going to be one of the features of our appeal you know uh, we asked for a certain remedy and we uh, pled certain injuries and uh, the court um, didn't examine those questions it just moved on and what it did find though was that the writ vehicle was appropriate um, you know, it's kind of a procedural thing, um, but she did find that uh, the writ was appropriate, so uh, the Superior Court did uh, move the ball down the field a little bit, and, uh, you know, we're picking it up, and uh, we're going to take it in for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, since the decision uh, was issued, or opinion was issued by the um, Judge Sokola, um, ha have you heard um, from any other employees or your your client yeah. i mean okay yeah and i know where you're going with that yeah there's a tremendous <laughs> amount of interest in this mm -hmm. uh, in spite of um, a setback in the superior court uh, people are enthusiastic and um you know things are changing this is that uh, people are demanding that they uh they receive what the law promises them and uh the enthusiasm hasn't waned a bit i would note that we're still in an emergency situation Mm -hmm. What did you make of the Attorney General's office's uh, response to uh, Judge Sicola's decision? Uh, the press release? Yes. yes. Out, uh, immediately after the decision? I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to recall exactly what it was they said, but I think that what they were, uh, you know, this, or the uh, Attorney General's office, you know, quite frankly, um, never seen so many crocodile tears from an agency they're always talking about the fact that they want to get these people paid but they want the process to be corrected or correct you know and so forth and so on uh, frankly i don't believe a word of it um, they are doing what they can to stop these people from uh, getting paid and uh, you know uh, in spite of the fact that they're you know they wring their hands and uh, pretend that they're upset about it that these people are not getting paid it's just very very difficult to accept that as a truthful representation right especially when you consider the zeal with which they're fighting uh this case yeah yeah they're really um yeah they're, they're uh you know putting their resources into it um but anyway uh let me ask you is the gft filing a lawsuit or not that's what uh, robert Koss said they plan on filing one in uh, the district court he couldn't say when he uh, did say that they have three years uh because it's a wage complaint three years but okay. i mean he also said it wasn't going to be three years yeah uh, he got you know tommy kind of um seems to keep saying that they want to do it right uh -huh. they don't want to rush into it and that's the answer we've been getting for a few weeks now mm -hmm. what's oh. your take on that though is there something else going on here tom that we don't know about because there's there's I, I like the back and forth that you and robert Koss are having but i would think that you guys would kind of be allies in this and that you're both yeah i mean you know fighting for the double pay i mean that's the simplest on its simplest uh you know the simplest face of it you're both mm -hmm. you both want the same thing yeah the goal here is to get these people paid it's not to you know clothe ourselves in glory or anything because we're the one who did it we are natural allies in this however if um, the position of the guam federation of teachers is they've got three years to do this uh, I do not think that the government of Guam employees have three years to make the rent payment. I don't think they have three years to pay for pharmaceuticals. I don't think they have three years to fill their car cupboards. 
I just, uh, that seems a remarkably callous thing for uh, the Guam Federation of Teachers to say. By any chance, have you guys uh, spoke with each other? No, we haven't. Okay. Uh, we haven't. I got and, his uh, number, Tom. You want me to send you his number? Okay. <laughs> I want to be the peacemaker. There's, okay, but let's not make this into more than it actually <laughs> Why, uh, it's entertaining. I bet it is, but <laughs> but uh, no, we are natural allies right. in this. If Mr. Koss can get those folks paid, good on him. Yeah, All right. There's, uh, there's, there's no strife or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Tom, mm-hmm. I got I got to ask you because I, I I wasn't sure if you're the Thomas J. Fisher who uh-huh. picked up a packet at the uh, or someone had picked up a packet on your uh, behalf at the Guam Election Commission. So. I mean, we got you here. At, I got to ask you, what was that about? I am the Thomas J. Fisher who picked up a package at the Guam Election Commission. And then I was told yesterday I'd appeared on some sort of a spreadsheet as a candidate for senator. I just checked that this morning. I didn't. I didn't see your name on the list. Are you? Are you planning though to run? No. See, so were you picking it up on behalf of somebody else? Maybe. Oh. And it might be that as a citizen, I just wanted to look at it, Sabrina. Yeah. Right. And that, hey, Tom, I had that same problem. I went in and I picked up a packet uh, because I was doing a story about the election and I wanted to see what was in the packet and we wanted to shoot video of it. Right. And so I had to sign for the packet. And then, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, up to now, I'm still getting texts. Hey, are you running? Hey, are you going to turn in your stuff? Mm-hmm. Hey, do you need me to sign your petition? Like, I'm not running yeah. all i did was pick up a packet but you have to sign for it and then that list of people who picks up the packet is public information and that's what gets sent i mean my name was in you know uh the tv news over here it was in the mm. newspaper over here I'm people were boss. calling me asking you <laughs> if you were running i was like are you, you not telling me yeah, something for real <laughs> i don't know chris i heard you were already organizing oh really <laughs> yeah what's your color is going to be yeah mm-hmm. okay <laughs> Pink and white, I think. Some. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Right on. Okay. Well, I noticed. Um, I saw in the newspaper that we are now celebrating Law Week, at least for two more days. Oh uh, yeah. You guys saw that? Yeah. Right. It I was think a, a ceremony or signing or something yesterday at Adeloupe. And they're doing. Uh, I think and, they're um, also. Uh, you know that just kind of steams my clams a little bit. The um, Law Week. I guess the slogan is your your vote voice our democracy and um anybody can figure out what that means uh we'll give them a nickel <laughs> um and then considering you know considering what's been going on um with uh, the death of mr floyd and the entire world marching for equal justice for those who have been and are historically oppressed i haven't heard a peep from the law community about that I don't understand this vote voice democracy stuff. How about Black Lives Matter? How about equal justice under law? Um, I don't understand, maybe I missed it, but I don't understand where the Attorney General is on this. I don't understand, I, I commend, by the way, uh, Senator Moylan, who was just on your show, he was down at that uh, Black Lives Matter rally uh, this, this past Friday, so good on him. Um, but I haven't seen anybody else around. You know, I think it's um, it's interesting to bring that up because we even had the doctors uh, come out and yeah. uh, take a knee in solidarity with Black Lives Matter. You're right. Uh, we haven't heard anything from uh, the legal community. Uh, we also haven't heard anything official. And I'm not even sure what kind of statement the Guam Police Department would have. But we do know that the chief of police uh, showed up to uh, the Black Lives Matter uh protest at ITC on mm-hmm. Friday. Good for Steve. I'm glad, good for Chief Ignacio. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, that is one of the most, I'll tell you what, I don't know if you guys were down there. I was at the one um, here in Hagania, uh Friday, and you know, even though the weather was a bit inclement, uh, there was a there was a very large crowd down mm-hmm. there, and it right. was young. And we actually did a live show um, from all, from both sites, and then also covered the uh, the demonstration in Saipan in one one um, program. Great. Um, and and it, you, you're right, there was a ton of people, especially down in Agania. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, no gubernatorial campaign could ever uh, gather that many people in support. Right. And that by far, the people down there were young, and they were enthusiastic and concerned, so as uh, screwed up as things seem to be, at least uh, this next generation trust. 
that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But I would like to hear from, uh, you know, why don't you give him a call? Why don't you ask the Attorney General uh, what he thinks about all this? I, I would think that uh, maybe the type of statement we would see would be something uh, proactive, like if you are uh, in a victim of, uh, you know, police brutality or, you know, uh, any type of discrimination, this is what um, protections are afforded to you. Uh, this is what our office could do. This is where you would go. This is the process, right? That kind of thing is, yeah, yeah. I mean, other than maybe a position statement on, you know, we hate police brutality or something. It, it seems like a, a really easy thing to do, Tom, and you're right. I don't know what is up with the, the silence on it. Yeah, I don't either. I've just uh, maybe one thing the Guam Police Department could do and should do, we've tried to get this information from them before through a FOIA, uh, is what is their use of force policy? Mm. You know, uh, how does it escalate? That sort of thing. I think, um, you know, I suppose the Guam Police Department will say, well, we don't want to release that for, you know, the following three reasons. Uh, but it would sure would be nice. I mean, they are our police, and we'd like to know how they're trained and how they conduct themselves. Fortunately, we have a very, very professional force, and I don't think that, you know, the allegations of excessive force are are uh, over and above anything you, you'd find elsewhere in the United States. But, you know, we got this conversation going. I want to hear what uh, the Guam Bar has to say about it. I want to hear what the Attorney General has to say about it. I'll tell you what I say about it, and I'm sure you do too, which is Black Lives Matter. Right on, Tom. And we'll end on that note, okay? So yeah, That's perfect, yeah. Right. I appreciate it. And Thanks, Tom. Keep us posted, all right? You're very welcome. Okay. okay. All right, goodbye. Wash Bye. your hands. 949. Uh, attorney Tom Fisher always oh, got a, a really cool uh, take and uh, definitely uh, I think he can speak with experience because uh, he's got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think he came to Guam, was a prosecutor with the AG's office. So that's kind of how he made his uh, uh, start here. And, you know, lo and behold, uh, a couple decades later, uh, suing for double pay. All right, uh, we'll take a... Wait, can we just yes, let we this can. out? Yeah, Please. the Navy just posted uh, something on... Uh, their website, uh, they have the findings from the USS Theodore Roosevelt Public Health Investigation.